Here we go for round one with our black white token deck. Our opponent is on the play at Mulligant and we are keeping this hand. We don't have that many lands yet, but with Traveler, Caller and Gather, we are actually going to be very active. And we do have the Reaper, so we are living the dream. There's a Typhoid Rats, which is most likely worse than the Traveler. And our opponent mulliganed into a one-lander, it seems. And we're hopefully going to punish him quickly. This doesn't really look like a good deck on his part. I don't think I have to be afraid of mass removal, although a deck like his could be playing... Okay, he doesn't give us any more information with that. He could be playing some kind of um, rolling Templar effect, so yeah, I'll, I'll just equip and not drop the Typhoid Reds. The damage output is quite high anyway. And let's face it, he doesn't have much, so... Both his keep and his deck seem kind of underpowered currently. So he's playing green-black. Maybe it is some kind of spider spawning. Spider spawning mulch. But Warden of the Wall is not a card I would expect in a spider spawning deck because it's not a creature which is important for not the bone and spider spawning itself but we probably never we won't find out so what do we have skillful launch some discard brain weevil night terrors and ghoul calls chant i like ghoul calls chant quite a bit when the opponent is milling you obviously it uh, just you get uh, better options. Oops. Um, I think if there is a potential for him to be spider spawning or some, some, something similar, you always want to board in Night Terrors just because it's so powerful against them. And in case that he isn't, we don't lose much because it's a, well, it's a playable card, even though it's not a great one. So the question is, what I could take out because I like most of my most of my cards quite a bit I think Village Cannibals isn't the greatest he might not even be um, removing that much the Gargoyle can actually be quite a problem for me because my voice of spirits get stopped but I think I have enough effects to get through so as much as I like Night Terrors, I think I want my uh, synergies to be as good as possible. I could think about um, dropping a land, dropping a planes, because I'm going to be on the draw next game. And yeah, that. But I don't. I don't really want to risk it. I'm. I think I'm. I'm favored to win anyway. So. There is no need to risk a mana screw at this point. And once again, we only have two lands, but they aren't the worst. And we are guaranteed to be able to drop, drop um, Gather and Blazing Torch and most likely Voiceless Spirit, so. Our opponent kept this time. I'm going to drop Blazing Torch because I'm going to be short on mana. Now any land is going to enable Voiceless Spirit. Planes enables Loyal Cathar. So he is in fact some kind of spider spawning deck. And that means I'm just going to take it to the air. Of course my vault isn't going to do that much. But 
but he has to do something first. He could attack here into my voiceless spirit, and I'd probably take it. Yeah, I have no reason to give him morbid or anything. Now, this could mean he has the 2-3 um, flash flyer, and which would be bad if I attack with voiceless spirit. So, despite Mausoleum Guard being the most cost efficient spell, mana efficient spell, I think I'm going to equip Blazing Torch here to make sure that I can get through for damage. I'm not going to attack with the human because he can easily trade with Typhoid Rats and I don't want to run into the 2-3 be forced to sacrifice Blazing Torch. And the other reason is I could equip Loyal Cathar because it's very unlikely that I need the Blazing Torch right now. And the other reason is that I want my Morbid Triggers for later and the chance of having Morbid Triggers grows uh, the more creatures I play, which should make sense. Now that Loyal Cathar is equipped with Blazing Torch, it can't be blocked by these two zombies, so it can only be blocked by the red. And that means he either takes two or enables Morbid. Now, the question is how much I get from killing Armored Scarp or the Bone Flinger. But I think just having the 4 power creature is reason enough to do it because I don't know at what point I'm going to get Morbid again. So I can also start to activate Vault of the Archangel if I want to at some point. I think the Bone Flinger is the more dangerous card, but I can Blazing Torch that one. So I think I'm going for the 4 Toughness guy. He has 4 creatures in the graveyard, so Spider Spawning is not a threat yet. That's a good card, but it's also just more zombies, so I think we are fine here. Now, do I want more Crude Bench to be blocked by two of his guys? I don't think so. Now, if I equip Blazing Torch to the Banshee and attack with my humans, he can just block one human and force me to activate the Vault, which doesn't seem very good. I want one more creature in play. And because I have Vault of the Archangel, oh, I could I could have played Gallus Warden first because Morkwood Banshee gets some boost from that. I'm not going to attack with the Cathar because I want to save it for the turn where I activate the land. And he has to start doing something at some point. Let's hope it's not something that's good against Vault of the Archangel. Okay, that's just more zombies. Now, once again I have the choice of what to equip. Now that the Banshee has 5 toughness, it's very difficult for him to block effectively. I think Unheld Cathar is in fact the best carrier of a blazing torch even though it's a zombie itself it doesn't care okay yeah that that looks like a that looks incredibly good for me 
because I, <laughs> I can just activate Vault and kill all his blockers. Especially if he blocks Mark Adventure with four creatures. I mean, he could just jump block the Banshee or triple block it. Th this, these are his options. If he if he blocks with the fourth creature, oh, he's going, he's going nuts. I could have left black back a creature with Blazing Torch, but I think the uh, evasion and damage output and the potential to. Um, Kill him later on is just too powerful. Now I don't know why he blocked with four creatures. Like if I have another removal spell, he's probably dead anyway, so he got a mayor of Everbrook. And I only have some more lands to work with but I'm at 30 life and he's at 8 so if I attack with everything he has to block so Screeching Bat is probably blocking something I think Mayor of Everbrook is not a threat at all so even if it flips during my turn well that well that wouldn't be the greatest then he gets a he gets something back so I do want to cast Mausoleum Guard this turn, which means I probably shouldn't attack with the human, but just equip equip the human and attack with my two guys. And then I play a spell, which forces him to do something or die. This would only transform during my turn, so he wouldn't even get the wolf. And with Blazing Torch, each of my attackers is lethal. And the size of his creatures don't matter. So at this point I'm actually throwing the torch at his face. Now there could be certain cards that are bad for me, but I don't think he's playing them. Like uh, the fork would be kind of awkward. The new fog with Fateful Hour would mean I don't deal any damage this turn and I only have the human for next turn but even that is still quite good with the Vault of the Archangel so I don't know I, I suppose he's dead to just Gallows Warden but I don't want him to be able to draw out of this with the flash creature or some other spell. Okay, yeah, this is also, of course, always an option. So, my Blazing Torch wasn't very well spent. That was, uh, I have to admit that. I should have expected that instead of thinking about the fog. But now that his last card is revealed, I think 
even with all the life gain, he's not going to defeat Vol of the Archangel. Especially when blocking this guy or this guy gives me another creature to work with. I think he should have blocked the un Unhallowed Cathar. Oh, he didn't block. Okay, yeah, that makes more sense. He can get another 10 life. And I'm just going to continue attacking him. Is he expecting to race me? It looks like it, but I'm on 39. That's also a good card. Now, he's probably forcing me to vault. And he's also playing not the bone, so... I think... This is quite interesting because I actually want to get the Reaper from the Abyss into play this turn. Which means that I should maybe attack in a way that doesn't make it too obvious that I want to activate Vault. So the question is does he block two creatures? Well I can always I can always cast the Reaper later if his block is somehow bad for me. I could also equip the guard so that he can't block it with his wolf. But then he can still block vampire on guard. Hmm. Nah, if I equip the guard, I think he doesn't have any, any good blocks uh, for the guard. And then I just leave the human back. Oh, actually, I, could, I can just uh, lose the human. It's not, not a big deal. So now if he blocks mausoleum guard, I get three spirits, so the question is if he blocks with stalking vampire if I attack like this, I am fine not activating Vault of the Archangel. And if he doesn't block it, I'm actually fine just casting Reaper from the Abyss. But I do want to trade these, so I think attacking with every everything and just waiting for his block is the best. If he only blocks with one creature, I can Reaper from the Abyss. And if he blocks with two creatures, I can still decide to activate the Vault. Now, this is um, him killing my weaker creatures. So, um, which I gave him the, the chance by equipping. And that means I'm just going to Reaper him. Don't know if that was optimal, but it looks quite good. I don't know how he, bl how he blocks if I don't equip. But I think this game is over. Yeah, my morbid theme is in full effect. So, he's at 3, I have a Morbid Trigger, he's milling some cards, there's Spider Spawning, so we have a, oh, and Grasp of Phantom, so we have some competition going on. However, we are going to kill both of his creatures. And equip a spirit. Ah, we probably have to equip Gallows Warden if we want to attack. 
throw the spiders or not with the vault of the archangel yeah I certainly didn't didn't play that optimally mm -hmm. but I think it doesn't matter so I was at such an advantage The only thing that was really bad was throwing the torch at him when he could have just where he just had uh, not to the bone to survive. I was I wasn't thinking about the life gain potential. Uh, this looks like a good block, allowing him to kill some spirits maybe. But he needs. Three for the warden and two there, so he's still just jump blocking and most likely drawing dead. Is it that that's not necessary. One spider is enough to kill a spirit. Okay, I think I think his best block is one on each spirit, three on the warden, and chump blocking the black card black creatures. And that's because he just has to kill Gallows Warden instead of double blocking spirits. But maybe he wants to double block the spirits to not lose too many spiders. Yeah, that that could but I don't think that's an option, so. Okay, so it's basically as if he isn't blocking with one spider. Which is actually, I think it's worse for him because he could um, try to turn my demon against me. Okay, uh, maybe a little rusty, didn't play optimally, but this deck was not really a match for our synergies and powerful cards. See you in the next round.